Hi, today we're going to talk about the domain and range, but this will lead into doing piecewise functions. And before we do piecewise functions, I want to make sure that all my students have a deep understanding on how to find the domain and range. The domain is simply what x can be. So anything that would not make the function go undefined is within the domain. The range, on the other hand, is what y can be once we input the domain. So even though y would not be undefined at certain uh, points, if x is not within the domain, then we do not have the range that corresponds with that x. So y is what we get when we put in x, which x is in the domain. When we do an example right here, we have a set of ordered pairs. We have 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 2, negative 5, and 0, 3. Now, the domain would not would in this case be all the x's. So 2, negative 1, 2, and 0. Now, on the other hand, we have the y's being 3, 0, negative 5, and negative 3. We would get this particular range. Now, notice that the domain has three terms and the range has four terms. That's because if you have two x's, there's no need to write 2 twice. Now, if you look at the graph and you try and figure out what the domain range is, the domain says over here it's all real numbers, and the reason why I would say it is because when you look at uh, the x-axis, you can tell that the graph will continuously go to the right and will also go continuous to the left, which means we're in pretty much including every single x value because we are continuously going in both directions. However, I do not like this notation. The way I'm going to have my students write it is uh, domain is going to be negative infinity going all the way up to positive infinity. That's called the inter interval notation. The interval notation starts at the lowest point and goes all the way up to the biggest point. If there's no break in between, this is what it would look like. With a break, I'll show you how to deal with that. The range, you can kind of see that this parabola would start at 0, y equals 0, and go all the way up to infinity. Therefore, the range in this case would be starting at 0, going all the way up to infinity. Now, the parentheses say we do not include values, the brackets do include values. The function clearly has a point at y equals 0, so therefore 0 is included in our range. But we do not include infinity, and that's because infinity is a theoretical number that cannot be reached, so therefore it cannot exist within your domain. Now if you do a function example, we have a, we have a radical function happening right here, we just have to understand the nature of the function and when the function is undefined. We know that a radical cannot be negative. So we know that the inside, which is x minus 5, needs to be either greater than or equal to 0. We can have a 0 in here, we can have positive values, but we cannot have negative values. So x being less than 0 is a no-go. So our domain can be, can be figured out by doing a problem just like this. Make the inside bigger than or equal to 0. Solve for x by adding 5 on both sides in this case. And you get x is greater than or equal to 5. So our domain starts at 5, includes 5, and goes all the way up to infinity. So the way it would look like is putting a 5 and going all the way up to infinity, not including infinity, because again, that's a theoretical number we cannot reach. To find the range, we have to understand the nature of this function. This function will continuously increase. When x gets bigger, so, gets, so does y. So we need to figure out what the lowest value this can possibly be. When we input x equals 5, this will equal to 0. This will be your lowest value. Your minimum of this function is 0. Your maximum is infinity because we can go all the way up to infinity. Not, not reaching infinity, obviously. It cannot be reached, but this function will continuously increase it's because this is an increasing function. If x is 100, we have a square root of roughly 100 in the hands. If x is a million, again, it will be a lot bigger. So our range will start at 0 because that's a minimum, including 0, and it will go all the way up to infinity, not including infinity. That's how we write our domain and our range. So please make sure that you do this accordingly. We, I don't like this notation very much. It is a notation we will study in college, but for high school I want you guys to stick with interval notation. Again, a set of numbers. To find a domain, we simply get all the x's together. Notice for the y's, however, that we have two y's that are similar, which means we do not have to write it twice. For our domain, we have 3, negative 3, 7, negative 8, 0. But for our range, we have 7 negative 2, negative 5, and negative 1. Let me 
do a graph that looks like this, first I would like to note that this is not a function. The reason is, it will not pass the vertical line test. When I draw a vertical line over this function, it will intersect twice, which means not a function. But that's besides the point. We're just trying to figure out what the domain and range is for this graph. Not function, but just graph. So to find the domain, we know that the domain starts at x equals 3 and goes continuously to the right. So we start at 3 and go up to infinity. We also know that this function will continuously go up, it will continuously go down. So we know that we're going to be at negative infinity going up all the way up to positive infinity because we will go continuously go down as x continuously goes to the right. To do these problems, we're going to first find out the nature of this function. This function, there's nothing I can put into x that will make this function go undefined. Also, this is a polynomial. Now this particular polynomial is a quadratic and a binomial, meaning it has a degree of 2, which is why I call it a quadratic. It has two terms, that's why it's binomial. Any polynomial will have a domain that is all real numbers. Uh, another way to write it is going from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's what all real numbers is. This is a set of numbers that has all x's. And that's described by saying, okay, let's start at negative infinity, go up to infinity. That in pretty much includes all x. The y, in this case, the range, you have to understand that this particular polynomial is a quadratic, when you graph it, it will look like a parabola. A parabola has a minimum value, or a maximum, in this case it's a minimum, and it will continuously go up. That's what parabolas look like. We talked about parabolas in our previous video, and we just pretty much have to find out what the minimum value can possibly be. This guy is either zero or bigger. Because we're squaring the x, this can never be negative. So the minimum value for this guy right here is 0. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Again, to find out what the range is, we have to find out the minimum value of what your y can possibly be. And this is an increasing function. This continuously goes up. When x goes to infinity, so does y. So, so we are going all the way up to infinity. That's our range. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our range is negative 4 to infinity. So find out what the minimum value is. For this guy, this is an inverse function. The way an inverse function looks like is something like this. Now for inverse function, you just have to kind of understand that x cannot equal to 0. Meaning that we, we would have an asymptote happening right here. And I'll talk about asymptotes in other videos. But uh, x cannot equal to 0. So that's not within our domain. So our domain is x cannot equal to 0. Now I do not like this notation. So the way I would like to say is anything less than 0. So negative infinity and all the way up to 0. Not including 0, not including negative infinity. Everything bigger than 0. So 0 going to infinity, not including both one. Again, to make this one set, we need to union the two sets right here. And that's by doing this right here. That's, an, that's a U, which stands for union. Therefore, now we have a single domain that simply does not include zero, because I use parentheses. If I would have used brackets, I would have included zero, but I didn't. For our range, you got to understand that there's nothing I can put into X that would give me a Y equaling zero. I can't get anything less than zero for Y. I can't get things bigger than zero for y, but I cannot get 0 itself. This cannot, there's nothing I can put in here that would make this entire function equaling 0. So our range will look exactly like our domain. We start at negative infinity, we go up to 0, not including 0, and then we start at 0 and we go up to infinity. And that's our range for this point. This graph will look like a circle. The circle will go left and right to, up and down to. So a, a good way to graph it is to kind of create the endpoints for all the x and y values, and then try your best to hit those points. And that is a difficult task for me. That that's obvious right here. However, it makes the domain so much easier to recognize. I know that the domain is between two, negative two and two. So the domain will look like this negative 2 to 2. Am I including 2 and negative 2? Yes, because the points do exist. So I need to produce brackets. The range, same thing. Negative 2 all the way up to 2. So the range in this case, because the circle is centered at 0, 0, the origin will look 
the same as the domain. So it'll be negative two to two, including two. This this polynomial is a linear function. It is a binomial, and because it has two terms, and it's simply linear because it looks like mx plus b. Because the polynomial, you should immediately know that the domain will be negative infinity to infinity. Now, if you choose to write all real numbers like this, that's fine with me as well. The range for a line, if you if you if it's not a horizontal line, will be continuously upwards and downwards. So our range will look the same way. Had this been a a, a line that is horizontal, meaning it would have looked like y equals three or something like this, then it would not have negative infinity to infinity. It would simply have range being three in this case but we don't have um, a constant function, therefore it does go all the way down to infinity, it does go all the way up to infinity. Now let's talk about piecewise functions. To do piecewise functions, you have to graph it first, and then we look at the domain, which is why we worried about the domain and ranges in the previous, in the previous problems. So over here, this line has a y-intercept at 3 and a slope of 2. And when I say 2, I mean 2 or 1. So to graph this guy, I start at 3, make a point, Go up to, go to the right one. Go up to, go to the right one. Go down to, go to the left one. Go down to, go to the left one. Over here, we have our line happening this way. Now, to graph this guy, we start at 4, and let me use a different color. We start at 4, and our uh, slope is negative 1, which is negative 1 over 1. Go down 1, go to the right one. Go down 1, go to the right one. Go to left one, go up one. Go to left one, go up one. So now we have our line happening right here. Now the domain just allows us to understand what we erase. So for the first line that's blue, uh, let me just indicate that this is this color. For the blue line, x had to be less than t 1 or equal 1. So we have to erase anything that's bigger than 1. So let me just go ahead and fine-tune my eraser so I don't erase too much. Anything bigger than 1 needs to, be needs to be taken care of. So let me just go ahead and erase all the values bigger than 1. There we go. Now for the other function, we know that x is greater than 1. So anything less than 1 needs to be erased. So let's erase everything that's less than 1. Here we go. The only thing we have to watch out for is are the ones included or not. For the blue function, it is included because we have x is less than or equal to. For the pink function, however, it is not included. So that's indicated by open dot. The blue one will have a closed dot. This will have an open dot. And here we are. That's our graph for our piecewise function. You graph both functions and you erase the appropriate areas. Now, another thing I would like to pretty much say is, what does f of 1 equal? Well, because I'm looking at this guy right here, x equaling 1, we, that's within this domain, I will look at this function. So f of 1 equals 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 5. You can see it here as well. Add x equals 1, y equals 5. It does not equal 3. 1 is not within this domain, though therefore we do not use this function. Now I would like you to try this piecewise function on your own. Pause the video and try to graph these two lines and consider the domains, and then I will do it. So I'm assuming that you paused the video, and now I'm going to start graphing it. Now, this line right here will start at negative 2, so go all the way up down to 2, and make a point. The slope for this guy is down 1 to the right 1, so we will respect that as well, and use this slope right given right here. Now that you have the points, you should try to draw the line to the best of your ability, and to me it seems like that this is my best right here and for the other color we start at 1 so go up 1 make a point and now we have a slope of 2 so go up 2 go to the right one go up 2 go to the right one so it will look like this it will look like that and we will create a line here we go that's the best I can do now the uh, point that we are interested in is x equaling negative 1 because one will only include x being less than once and equaling one, and the other one has to only have x being bigger than negative one. So we need to erase the appropriate areas. Now for the x for this guy, for the blue graph, x has to be less than or equal to negative one. So anything bigger than negative one needs to be erased. So let's assume that we have, let me just go ahead and create a uh, 
create x equals 1. Let's say that's x equals 1 right here. Then we need to erase anything that is bigger than 1. So let's erase this stuff. Here we go. And now for the other function, x is greater than negative 1. So we need to erase anything that's less than negative 1. Here we go. To me, it seems like these functions intersect, and I'm going to figure out if they really do by using a method that I show you right now. But um, for the first blue function, we did include negative 1, so I will make it a closed circle. The other one did not include negative 1, so that's a open circle. There we go. That's how you graph them. Now, to verify that these, this, these do indeed touch at the same point, simply plug a negative 1 in this guy and in this guy. See if the functions equal each other. So the first one I have negative, negative 1, minus 2. For the second one I have 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Now for the first one this becomes positive 1, minus 2 gives you negative 1. For this guy I have negative 2 plus 1 which is negative 1. Yes, they do indeed touch each other therefore it is actually a continuous function. What I mean by that is for every x we have a y and um, there's no break. Even though these are two different functions, they do connect at the same point, which means they cause each other to be continuous. This function right here would not be continuous because there's a break, if that makes sense. Now what happens if we have three functions like this? Like let's say we have x squared, negative x plus 1, and radical x. I use different colors to symbolize the, the, the three functions. The only thing I really need to worry about is erasing the correct parts. When we have x squared, which is this parabola, I need to make sure x is less than negative 2 or equal negative 2, meaning that bigger than negative 2 is a no-go. So I will go to negative 2, erase anything that would make my parabola bigger than negative 2. And I'm going to leave it like this. I know this is a little bit um, not so well drawn because I have some blues left over but I hope you understand what I'm, where I'm going with this. So the only, part that's, the only part that's valid is this part right here. This is the only part that's valid. Now for the other function, for the next function, the middle one, this line, we know that we need to be between negative 2 and positive 3. So we're going to go to negative 2, make sure that anything less than negative 2 gets erased, and then we fine-tune my eraser a little bit because it's a little bit too thick. So hopefully I did a good job right there. And also anything bigger than 3 also needs to be erased. So that's what I'm doing right here. Uh, keep in mind that we do not include the two points, so we need to make open circles. And I kind of forgot to make a closed circle for my parabola, so I will do that as well. And I accidentally erase part of this guy. Now for the last function, the radical 3, we need to be bigger than 3. We cannot be less than 3. Also, we can and be allowed to be 3 as well. So let's just erase anything that represents less than 3. And also, since we added, let me just take care of this guy too. Also, we need to make sure that this graph symbolizes that x that this function includes x equals 3. So I need to make a closed dot right here. Now, this is the end, and I really want you to uh, do this particular one. Tell me what f of negative 2 is and also tell me what f of 3 is. I want to see if you guys can kind of figure out which uh, function you would use in the scenario and while you add it also tell me what f of 0 equals. Alrighty, that being said, you guys have a fantastic day and